Welcome to Temple and Rye, folks. I'm Keith Kirkhoff. I'm one of the distillers here at Temple and Rye. I'm one of the founders. But uh, what I'll do is give you a little history of Temple and Rye and how we got started here in Templeton and the history back during Prohibition. And then uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have concerning our pro production and so forth. But uh, as many, I guess the first thing I like to tell people is what Prohibition is. And Prohibition was actually. Uh, when they outlawed liquor. But the reason they outlawed liquor back in 1920, was actually it was January 17, 1920, they forbid the production, transportation, or consumption of alcohol liquor. That's what stemmed this small community to end the production. They got a recipe and they started, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually some of the production was actually uh, in the regime of Al Capone and he labeled it as the good stuff, so that's how it got its name as the good stuff. <laughs> that gives you a little history of how I, but uh, anyway, when we first started Temple and Rye, Scott Bush resurrected Temple. When we first resurrected Temple and Rye, Scott Bush came up with the idea that he wanted to reproduce it, and he had to find out somebody that had the recipe. And he, Scott Bush is originally from Wall Lake, Iowa, up here north, and he called his great uncle Gus Schrader, who's a very prominent businessman up there, He's, just, he's in his 80s now. He said, uh, the only family I'd know would be the Kirkhoffs. Well, that's where I come involved. My grandpa was, a, was an entrepreneur during Prohibition. The production side of it, I'll explain to you, is actually there's three processes in making whiskey. You have your uh, mashing, fermentation, and distillation. And the mashing is actually this tank right here. You take, we have the rye drained off that. But right now, we're, uh, fermenting a batch in here, Burden. at that point, which will be a couple days now, we'll take it from this tank and we'll transfer it to the still. And the still is, this is a 300 gallon copper pot still. And you say, well, it's not copper, but you look underneath here, it's, a, it's actually a jacket we put over for economy purposes. But uh, anyway, at 173 degrees, we'll heat this up. Your vapors, the alcohol vapors will start evaporating. And they evaporate into this column here and then they get into the condenser part here. And inside here, we shut this all off now, but anyway, uh, cold water is forced in here. There's a coil, big coil in there. When them vapors hit that coil, they turn back into a liquid. And virtually what you end up with is you have your whiskey coming out. Whiskey comes out clear. And uh, over here, I have some of the first part of the whiskey is actually called the heads, the first cut. The heads, they call that the heads. And what that contains is your acid aldehyde, your methanol, and you don't want that in your whiskey. And we just, we figure that out through temperature. But I'm gonna open this up for you and let you smell this. You, and you go ahead and, it isn't gonna hurt you. But you, does it smell, <laughs> smell, it smell like fingernail polish? Yeah. That's your acid aldehyde. That's the part you don't want in your whiskey. And that's why we discard this. But years ago, they probably didn't do that. They just mixed it all together. But the thing of it is, that is what causes uh, health problems. You can cause blindness and so forth if you drink enough of it. Because you heard about people uh, drinking moonshine that went blind, white lightning. And that's, they didn't age the whiskey. When you age a whiskey, you will take some of that acid aldehyde out of there. And, and that's why you get a smooth whiskey afterward. Uh, I can actually, this, I just, this is whiskey that was in the barrel for six months. And where does it get its color? From the charcoal barrel. Everybody, all the barrels are burnt. They come from World Cooperage out of Lebanon, Missouri. Our particular ones do. And they'll be aged in the barrel for like four years. But this has been in for six months. And you get the biggest charge of color probably the first year. And then it gets a little bit darker every year after that. Um, if you'd like, if you guys don't mind, if anybody wants to take a chance, this is something I just took out of the still. A little bit ago, you can take a sip of that, don't. But you can see, you get 60% of your flavor out of a barrel. Out of the barrel, the charcoal. This room here is our lab. Uh, this is our original bottle fill. We bottled 25,000 bottles plus with this little apparatus here. You push the button, it'd fill. We had a reservoir, set them on a the table. Somebody would cork them, somebody would wipe them down, and everything was done by hand. They put the labels on, everything was boxed. and. Oh, this is uh, our raw goods storage and so forth, our barrel storage. 
And those barrels are full over there. We have some that we use for filling product right now. But uh, this is how our glass comes in. This is the Oslo bottle from France. They're all sealed up and so forth. And you'll see in our apparatus on the bottle machine, we have a prevention thing. We can suck any impurities that are in any bottle if there'd ever be one because it has a vacuum. But uh, they come in this way. Uh, the corks that we use come from Portugal and they're actual cork and they're highly expensive. They're like 72 cents a piece. <laughs> and uh, this is actually whiskey that's been packaged and ready to go to the state of Iowa has a sticker on it. This package over here will be going to Chicago or Illinois. We distribute it in Iowa and Illinois, it's the only two states we're in. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about, does anybody know what Angel Share is? Okay, all the barrels are charred when we get them. And that's where you get your color and you get your vanilla flavor and so forth from the barrels. But as you can see here, this stave, the whiskey moves in and out. And sometimes it moves out too far and it evaporates and they call that the angel share. We're allowed a tolerance of 2% per year on every barrel we have so we'll lose approximately a gallon a year out of a barrel and when you get to the scotches that are like 15 years old, a lot of time over in Scotland, those barrels will be two-thirds full when they dump them because that much evaporated. And the Tax and Trade Bureau, they allow you so much tolerance but if you go over that they're gonna say we don't care, we want our tax. So you gotta, that's why you have to document everything you do in the industry. A gate opens up and they roll on down to the bottling line. Well, that's a vacuum force A vacuum force air, yeah. It, it'll go. So we'll, uh, it's amazing how that little tray, they just squeeze on in there. And Rick has a, Rick's got a little uh, electric eye over there. He puts a bottle in front of that electric eye, it shuts everything down. This is our six bottle fill right here, folks. It fills it to a level, and that gate opens up, they travel on down. Rick Goody's our uh, bottle, bottle supervisor. He uh, corks every bottle by hand, and uh, then he moves them on down the line. And like I say, he'll usually let one bottle set there to shut the rest of the line down. And it, it stops the line, see, until they get, now they're going through the labeler right now. Labelers, the front and back labels here, if you watch it, that label goes on. You see them fins, them, they're sticking out. They rotate that bottle and it, it presses them on. Oh, okay. So, now that's just the front and back label. <laughs> Uh -oh. there, there you that's go. That's not a good, good. sound. <laughs> no, that's good. Okay, hold, uh, hold it up so we, hey, hey, she wants to take your picture. There. You want to see? This is Jen. She, every bottle, I don't know if you uh, notice that, but every bottle has its own identification. Oh, it, I'm so sorry. And, she, and she, Jen puts the labels on. She, every batch bottle, right here, she'll put that on. And then she hands it down to Anna Mae. Anna Mae puts the barcode on. Well, that's an easy job. That's yeah. Nice. And then Myra, Myra's here. She'll put this top seal on. And Mox has got the tough job. He's got to put the sleeve on. <laughs> that's pretty sophisticated. And this is a shrink guy. Here's the guy, he's a shrinker. That's Merlin, he's our, uh, he's the boss out. Dave, you said something about the guy that corks every bottle? Uh -huh. This lady writes every bottle. Oh. Well, you want that job? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. That's, yeah, don't step on her. Job. That's why you pay a little bit more for Temple and Rye. I'm going to get cussed for not having a tray here. Thank you. Only one now. I don't think that, that driver. You're the driver. I take care of that. Uh, I'm getting these people on That one was my dad. No, the one with the hat on. Yeah. Kirkhoff auction hat. Well, folks, I'll tell you what, we appreciate your interest in Temple and Ryan. Thanks for coming. And uh, if you have any more questions, we'd be happy to answer them. But other than that, have a safe trip home.